Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope the voice came in good and clear. Uh, we pray to the Lord that today is going to be a blessing day for all of us uh, to keep us safe. Uh, Christian, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhas, all of the human being, they are the children of God and God, he loved them and he want to save them. The problem is that the human being, he is very greedy. He don't want to be saved. Human being sometimes is the same as like <clears throat> Someone, he is from the fire department, he come to your house, he knock at your home. He say, please leave the house, it's going to cut in fire. You say, no, I don't, I don't believe you. I'm not going to go. Don't worry about me, just go. And then the fire come. Human being is very greedy, very arrogant, and he do a lot of bad things to himself. It's not God doing bad things to you, it's you. You do that. And, you know, yesterday, if you remember, we spoke about the free will. And if you watched that yesterday, the call between me and the person, his name, I don't know, I forgot his name, from Bangladesh. He speak like a Zach and Nag. Uh, we found that the free will is not exist in Islam, and Islam is a joke. So Allah, the God of Islam, he is going to punish you for something he forced you to do, which is absolutely, you know, stupid. In Christianity now, in Christianity, we are given all the freedom the only thing we don't have a freedom for is uh, let us say in logical uh, discussion is the decision of the judge which means it's not in my hand i commit my crime or i commit my good whatever it is and then the judge decide based on what it, what i did where i will go so in in somehow uh, there is a judgment and we knew what it is this is we cannot change but we can change where to go so free will is preserved and given to everybody and today with our free will we give our free book to indonesian people translated to them in their language <clears throat> and before i you know i start talking about it i want to say thank you for the person which i don't know I have no idea who is he. Um, I mean, he is sending messages in Skype for sure, but I don't know the person, you know. I mean, voluntarily, he did a great work, and I'm assuming that he did a good translation. I don't know, really. I don't understand the language. But you people who speak the two languages and you have the two books can tell me. Uh, so I want to say thank you for doing this great work, and I think... You know, like uh, already many of you have the other translation, which is Quran and science uh, for free too. So now <clears throat> Indonesian people, they have uh, two copies, one of the Quran and science, and the other one is deception of Allah, and both of them for free. Now, why it's important to have it for free? You see, uh, people like me, we have little support and the little support come uh, i'm very grateful from the lord for whatever i have uh, so we need really more money but isn't it saving hundreds of millions who they are poor they cannot even i mean i don't know how many of those millions can afford to buy my book but let's say only 10 percent 10 percent is a lot of people and a lot of money you can think, you can think about it but for me saving the 90 percent who don't have money to buy the book who don't have even a credit card is more important than 10 percent will get my book and make me maybe a lot of money so yes this is how we support ourselves but this is not really the Lord is always his our provider and I'm sure there's good people always they will help us and make donation and you know we, we will we would do good anyway the Lord is great so we want every single Indonesian to get the book you don't have a computer you can open it in your phone I think these days even the poor ones they can get a phone the phone is very cheap uh, you can get it in your phone you can open it you can read it and there is a lot of information <clears throat> Actually, when I wrote my book, there is a, there is a person who I know. Uh, he is a very, very high knowledgeable person in Islam. And for long, supposedly, 
um, he looked at me that I am learning, you know. And then after I wrote my book, he was shocked. He said, I cannot believe how, where you, where you been and where you are now. This is amazing. Because the book contains a lot of information. It's, it's impossible for somebody, even those who speak Arabic, to find them. Uh, and so is, imagine if it, what about the person who don't speak at all the language of Arabic? And for sure, the, uh, the Arabic language is uh, crucial in this case. Because Islam is a, as a religion is an Arab religion. Whatever they try to say to you, Islam is for everybody. It's a lie. You know, Islam is made by the Arab for the Arab. Even the Quran confirmed that. It says Allah, he sent the Quran for the city of Mecca and what is around it as Arabic book. And if you remember, <coughs> uh, just a few days ago, a person, his name is Yasser Kadri from, uh, I think he's from Pakistan originally. He said that there is a big problem with the, something called Haruf. Haruf, which is supposedly Quran sent in many reading. And the funny, the Muslim, they say, oh, it's uh, different in the letter here, letter there, doesn't make any difference. And for sure, this is a stupid answer to say. Uh, this is only come from someone who is naive or speaking to the naive and fooling the naive so he can relax them. Like, relax, you know, give you a drugs. Let me give you drugs. You see, if, uh, if the Quran reading is different by letter, then there is no need for, no, no need for Muhammad to say what he said. Look like Muslims do not even know. This is why Yasser Qadri, when he said what he said, every Muslim starts spitting at him, accusing him to be working for Christians, and they accuse him to be a Jew, and he worked for the Mossad. Yesterday he was a sheikh, today he is a sheikhi. Why? Because he shares some of the truth, not all of it. This guy is a big fat liar anyway. But if you see what Muhammad said, you will notice that the reading is not just letters. Just use little brain, little, the little brain God he gave you. Our brain is very little, you know. But being little doesn't mean that you, know, you have to be stupid. Muhammad, he keeps saying that my people cannot handle it to read the Quran in one reading. Which means Islam cannot be exist if we have only one recitation. You need to ask yourself here, so is it about a letter reading? My people would not be able to do it. Right now, you Muslims, you are able to read one reading. You have no problem. So is Muhammad lying? So either you have to accept that Muhammad here is lying, or you accept that Muhammad is saying the truth. And what is the truth? My people would not be able to do it. This is after what? This is after giving him the second Quran, third Quran, fourth Quran, fifth Quran, sixth Quran. So, Seven Quran is what make people be able to be Muslims, not one. Who said that, Muhammad? So obviously, this is not a, 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 like a, a differentiation between uh, uh, here I say the letter mean, there I say the letter uh, uh, ain. It, it's, this is not a letters. Obviously, it's totally different Quran. And the proof of that, even Uthman, when he collected the Quran, which is whatever left of it, actually, not the Quran, uh, he burned all the other Quran. So if they are the same, why he burned them? Obviously, there's a huge difference between them. Like imagine now I get my book and then I decide to burn my book. Right. Well, if it's the same, why I want to burn it? You know what I mean? If it's the same, why I want to burn it? And if the Quran came in many readings, why you want to burn the reading which Allah he gave you anyway? So, if every one of them, he wrote the Qur'an in the reading according to Muhammad, how he gave it to them, well, still they are legitimate. Uthman, he burned them. Why? Because obviously this is not about reading. Those are totally different Qur'an, and Muhammad, because he is a fraud, he cannot repeat the same verse twice correctly. So, he come with this joke that Allah, he sent me seven Qur'an. You know, ask yourself, okay, why Allah want to send the Qur'an in Arabic? And the people who speak Arabic very well, the Arab, they are the Arab, they are the Bedouin. Those people, they are not capable of doing it. Doing what? 
<laughs> you know, and those are the Arab. So I have a guy who lived in Indonesia. He have no idea what Arabic is. He is capable to be a Muslim. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? How a person from Indonesia or from Pakistan or from China, he is capable of being a Muslim today. That means there is none of them is a capable to be a Muslim today. It's a lie. Muhammad, he insists we need seven Quran. If the Arab cannot do it, you can do it. Like the guy yesterday, supposedly he was reading for me in Arabic. I was dying from his Arabic. Well, this is not Arabic. You know, they open, they open the Quran pages here, as I showed you before. And they go to like uh, uh, resembling Arabic. You know, they, they do resemble Arabic sound. They don't know Arabic, really. Uh, yesterday I opened it, what it was? I forgot which, which page. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's here somewhere, like, you know, where, where they're making the sound of the Arab or reading Arabic, but it is not Arabic, you know? Um, let us see. <laughs> And you know, if if uh, Quran, if Allah gave the Quran in seven languages or seven reading, all of them they are Arabic, and that will make the Arab understand it. So shouldn't Allah send seven Quran for you in Indonesian language? How silly, how stupid! But this is what happened. Muhammad is a fraud. He's a fool. In the same time, he always finds something to cover his bum. So he said, as an excuse for the, for the garbage he come with, none of our revelation, supposedly Allah gave him this, none of our revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten. So Muhammad here, he says, okay, Allah, he caused me to forget Quran, what I will do? We have a solution, don't worry. Okay, what is the solution? But we are going to make something better or similar. <laughs> Here you notice the stupidity of this phrase because Allah is saying he will make Quran better than the Quran of Allah. And Allah will cause you to forget the Quran so he will give you something similar. It's, look, it's like saying this. I will make you forget the following sentence. Muhammad is a fool. And then Allah, he gave you something similar. Fool is Muhammad. <laughs> so what the difference for, between them? <laughs> so why you cause him to forget the first one and now you are giving him something similar and to make it more horrible he said something better or similar what kind of God he says such a statement about his own words because how God he write words better than his words did he uh, like when he wrote the Quran first time he was not concentrating he was half asleep he was tired Maybe he have Corona. What do you mean you are going to write Quran better than the Quran? So Muhammad here is trying to find an excuse. And the excuse simply that, okay, you know, I do poo, poo Okay, my poo, poo is all over. And don't worry, Allah will cover my poo, poo And the funny, the Muslim, they say that the Quran is preserved. When Muhammad himself, he forget the Quran. Muhammad himself, he forget the Quran. <clears throat> Let us see the hadith. And here you, you find uh, the madness. Look at this. Look at this stupidity. I want you to serve this verse here. This hadith. The Prophet said, Why does anyone of the people say, I have forgotten such and such verse of the Quran? He, in fact, caused by Allah to forget. <laughs> Unbelievable. Did we lose connection? Hmm. 
I hope not. Okay, my connection is up and down, so I hope I hope it will be fine soon. Yeah. Uh, do you, I guess is my voice coming? So as you see here, Muhammad saying, if any of you forget the Quran, don't say I forgot the Quran. Allah caused you to forget the Quran. Now question, why Allah will cause a believer to forget the Quran? Is that a gain? Isn't this stupid? It's like saying Jesus make me forget his command. I mean, so he gave me a command. And then he make me forget the command. What is that? Are we talking about a God? He's coming from a six years old uh, school. So Allah, <coughs> Allah is the one who caused the Muhammadan to forget the, 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 uh, the Quran. Uh, but the funny Muhammad he blamed the shaitan in different place and this is one of the funny things about Muhammad that Muhammad is a person who cannot stop uh, being uh, uh, stupid he cannot Is it the shaitan who make you forget or it is Allah who make you forget? Here it says it's Allah. In different place, it is the shaitan. Let me show you some example. We will try to find something in English. Actually, let's go to the Quran first. Because they cannot say the Quran is not accepted. You know them. They look for any excuse. The Quran full of verses saying that the one who forget things about Allah is shaitan. As an example, chapter 6, verse number 68. You know, the chapter 12, verse number 42. Chapter 18, verse number 63. Like here, the story about the head. How uh, how Moses he forgot his wheel next to the rock, who making who caused him to forget the wheel? Shaitan, brother, Shaitan. <laughs> you know, Muhammad he have one of things funny about him. He blame anything either in Shaitan or in the Jews. So at least now he is not saying the Jews because why? Because the guy he's talking about is a Jew. That would be funny if he blame Moses that he forgot the whale because of a Jew when Moses himself is a Jew so who is the one who caused uh, cause me to forget my whale it's not a fish it's a, it's a whale shaitan brother shaitan okay who is the one who caused you to forget Quran Allah brother okay hold on shaitan caused you to forget the, 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 the I mean silly stuff and he will not for, make you forget the Quran. So how, how people commit sin? Because they remember the Quran very well. In fact, no. The Quran confirmed that shaitan make you do that. And that's why we say Muhammad is a fraud. He cannot repeat. He doesn't remember what he said yesterday. The evil one, this is false translation. It's not doesn't say evil one. It says the shaitan has got better of them. So he has made them lose remembrance of Allah. Anything have to do with Allah? Isn't it the Quran is the first thing to do with Allah? So in one statement, it's the Quran. It's it is Allah who make you forget the Quran. In another statement, it is Shaitan who make you forget the Quran. Right? 
But, you know, for us, actually, as a Christians, we are lucky that Muhammad is a fool. Because the easiest way, I mean, to fight foolishness, I mean, it's easier to fight foolishness from fighting someone genius. Right? Like evil, evil and genius. Muhammad is a fool. And the problem is, many people do not understand, that Muslims who you speak to do today, they are, they are still in out Islam. They are not telling you what Islam is. Which means the problem is that Islam is not based on honesty. Every Muslim, he can give you his own opinion just to deceive you. And his opinion is not a true opinion. It's an opinion to present to you, which means it's a sell out. It's a presentation of a car have no engine. But he says to you, it's running fine. Just don't turn the engine, okay? First you buy the car, and then you can try it. And then after you join Islam, they say to you, oh, now you cannot leave. We will kill you if you leave. There is a sheikh in the TV. Actually, it's a memory TV, the, the program, the video, where the guy, he said, uh, he's proud about a Muslim. He said he have a Jewish friend. Not friend, I mean neighbor. He keeps saying to him, why don't convert to Islam? Why don't convert to Islam? And I'm, I'm sure this story is fabrication, by the way, because nobody fabricates stories as Muslims. Unbelievable. They are good in that. Uh, and I'm talking about Muslims who speak about religion. Uh, so he said, he keeps saying to his neighbor, uh, convert to Islam, convert to Islam. The Jew, because as usual, they, they want to make the Jews are bad. You know, the Jew, he said, well, I do smoke and I do drink. So supposedly they are, they are Jews, they are bad, my friend. They smoke and drink. The Muslims don't smoke and drink. The, the Muslims only, they sell drugs and cocaine and heroin. Only. Taliban, Pakistan, Hezbollah, you know. We don't do um, smoking, brother. We, we don't smoke, uh, no, we smoke hashish. We don't smoke no more cigarette. Hello, haram, haram. So he said to him, I smoke and I drink. The Muslim guy, he said to him, who said to you, you cannot, you cannot smoke and drink? The guy, the Jewish guy, he said to him, really? I can? He said, yeah, sure, you can. Say shahada, man. Say shahada. So the guy, he said shahada. He converted to Islam. After he converted to Islam, the Muslim guy, he said to him, according to the TV station, Sheikh, he said, okay, now, listen. Now you said shahada, you can't drink and you can't smoke no more. The guy, he said to him, you told me you can't drink and smoke. Who told you you cannot? He said to him, yes, I told you that before you convert to Islam. <laughs> <laughs> religion of the devil and the sheikh is proud about how smart this muslim he made this person convert to islam not knowing what he is signing for you see the deception so when you speak to muslims those who they claim to do da'wah which is mean like to invite you to convert to islam because today they cannot force you to convert to islam by the sword if they could, they would do it, trust me. Uh, like what they did in Iraq and Syria. You know, in Iraq, the Shia, they sent letters to the Christians in Iraq saying, you have three days, either you convert or you pay jizya. The Sunni did the same to the Christians in Iraq. Either you pay jizya or you convert. The same in Syria. So when they have upper handed uh, a power, they can do it and they will force it on you. But because majority now, they cannot. So what is the solution? The solution is a fraud, is to fool you, is to lie to you, right? So we have, we have to be smart, we have to be careful, and you know, this is why you see when I, when I speak to a Muslim, he don't answer, he will never answer. Yesterday, I asked a question, how many times? For almost half hour. Today, I said to the guy from Bangladesh, today I opened my computer, I go, I went live on air. I am exposing Muhammad, calling him a fraud. Is it me who decide to do that by my free will or Allah forced me? He will not answer. You remember? Do you remember yesterday? The video from yesterday, it's, you know, guys, you have short memory. Did Allah make you forget? Brother? Did Allah make you forget? He caused you to forget what happened yesterday. <laughs> so why you don't want to answer? Because the answer is embarrassing. The answer, yes, Allah caused me. Allah forced me to open my computer, go live on air, say what I say about Muhammad, and which make it Islam a stupid religion. 
So I will, you will send me to hell because you made me go live on air, expose Muhammad, spank Muhammad, and then you will punish me for saying what you forced me to say. Have you ever heard of a stupidity more than this? And this is why the guy he was refusing to answer the question. For a very simple a question is enough to destroy all their cult. Let me see if I can play a little part of it. Actually, I'm not planning to go long, but as you know, I love really staying with you and uh, sharing some education because my voice is tired. Uh, yesterday I ate lemon. You know, I love lemon. If you believe it? I love. I eat lemon like I'm eating uh, orange, uh, but lemon hurt my my throat. But I love it. What I can do? Subhanallah. <laughs> Yeah, let us go there. <clears throat> um, I will open the link for the yes. Yeah, so just just to show you how the game. It's a game. It's not. It's not really. There's no dignity. There's no honesty. There's nobody who wanna say the truth to you. They are not people who are fighting for truth. They have nothing to do with the truth. All what they care for is winning point by line. Let us see. Where is the guy he came? I have the a link in front of me, the video. I'm trying to find out where he called me. Uh, maybe at the end. Here. <clears throat> the answer of this question. I already said I, I will ask a shayo for I will study it and I will get that because I am not an expert in hadith, I am expert in Quran. So hmm. a child who commit no sin yet he will go to hell. Why? Because Allah decided to him before he was created like Adam 40 years before he created him where he will be. So Islam is a stupid okay. cult. It doesn't matter if you commit sin or not. It doesn't I, matter if you pray or I, not. You will go to hell if Allah decide to do so. My yeah, yeah, to be honest, my dear brother, I have got the point. I have to study the hadith, this hadith mm. particularly, okay? Because I have not yet studied this hadith. I should start. He need to study the hadith. I mean, what, what's wrong with you? You see, when you show them, like, it's like you go in the stage and you are going to play, uh, play boxing. And now uh, he got a hit in, the, his, in his two eyes and one in the head and one in the nuts. So what he will say? He cannot say, I lost. You say, I, I, I mean, what kind of a debate you say I want to study this? What study? It's in front of you. Study it. Go, go ahead. But by saying such a statement, he escape, he escape a big disaster. You see how smart the evil is sometimes? So if you are a normal average person who is not skilled with cornering those liars, he can escape you easy. So what try to do, they, they cover themselves by oil, so you cannot hold them. You know, you cannot hold me. Right? I'm a slippery. So they play the slippery game with you. Why do you want to answer? Because it's embarrassing. But it is hard, then later on I shall answer. No, 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 you see. No, why, what do you mean you need to study? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not giving you a book to study. It's a few lines. Hold on. You see how this is how you escape the conversation because now we have a shot in the head. Muhammad is proving to be false. And now you are saying to me, I need to study this hadith. Take your time. I'm listening. Go ahead. Study it. Go ahead. Yeah, of course, of course. I, I shall study this hadith now. I already, it does not mean, if I don't get the answer My now, friend, no, don't, don't, mean, don't go, don't go. No, 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 you see, because here we go. So the, so the, the second we show you that Islam is a stupid cult, you said, I will study, I will study. Are you saying to me, are, are you saying to me, what my prophet here, he said is very stupid. I need to study it. Are you saying that? It's not the case, my dear brother. So why why you are saying I need to study it? Because why you are getting so confused? Hold on. Because when you say to me, I showed you the first one, the second one, you did not say I need to study it. The, the second I shot you in the head, you say I need to study it. You are trying to run away from it. 
because it's very simple to explain. I mean, there is no need to, there's no doubt about it. A child, he never commits sin. He never even reached the age no, of sin. Of course Yet he Listen, might go. I, I said that I shall answer. Okay, where is the answer? I'm listening, no. Okay, I shall answer. Okay. I did not say I never, I will never answer. No, 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 no. I don't want you to shall answer. answer. I want you to answer now. No, this is a child, does it? Trust me, I will answer you. Trust me, I will give you an answer. The most stupid cult ever. And then the Muslims, in order to solve those problems, they have to fabricate a thousand lies to cover the first lie Muhammad he said. This is how Islam works. Like when, uh, you know, if we can call it a debate with the David Wood and Mimi Hijab. David, he says to him, uh, your God, Allah, have hands. He have legs. Uh, Mimi Hijab, he said, who says so? <laughs> That's it. The problem solved. You see, slippery. And if you are not skilled, not just in a debate, you know, you have, you have to be skilled in holding a snake covered by oil. You know what I mean? So you will shall not let them go out of the trap by saying such a statement. Who said so? Say to him, tell him who said so. Muhammad said so. The Quran says so. All your scholars say so. Who are you? Everybody then will laugh at him. So you have to be very careful when you uh, have a conversation with those people. You are not debating. This is not a debate. This is a game with the devil who will never give a true answer, honest answer. See, when you had, when two people debate, supposed he and both of them supposedly they are religious, we assume honesty from both sides, correct? Like if I'm going to debate an, a Hindu priest, and I assume that Hindus, they have a value on that to lie. I'm assuming that, especially as you as a priest, or a Buddha. But you cannot assume that with a Muslim sheikh. I'm not saying like this Mimi is not a sheikh. This guy is a potato tomato making money from the YouTube. None of them is those people are people of knowledge. You know, they have, they have uh, the, 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 the kid Mimi, he says to me, did you say this to the Muslim women? What I said, suckle me. I was quoting your prophet and it was your Muslim women who was saying Jesus, he have sexual relationship with his mother. Filthy coward, video editors. This is the standard, and not only that, even their own Muslim sheikhs, they play with their audio and their video. So they cut the video of Yasser Kadri, the guy he was the master of Mimi Hijab for all those years. He go with him like a puppy. He go in the car, start asking him questions. Should we Muslims do this? Should we Muslims do that? So if the guy is not a, your master, why you are asking him what we should do? But the second the guy starts saying something truthful, which I believe it was a mistake. What I mean by a mistake, I mean he made a mistake by being truthful for two minutes. This is not, not, not right, brother. You know, how dare you to be truthful for two minutes? Two minutes will cost you a lot. All right? Uh, guys, don't thank me for the book. Thank the Lord that the Lord he provide to us always the truth. And he used uh, he used us for 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 the good we can do. Each one of you, uh, like somebody saying thank you for the book. Each one of you, he can do something where he is. Maybe you don't have too much knowledge of Islam, but now you have a book. You have a lot of answers. You can refute their uh, scientific miracles. You have, I mean, you have anything to defeat anything about Islam so easy. And actually, the reason I believe uh, that Muslims don't want to get it close to me, especially those who claim to have knowledge, is my books and my videos. The second they see who is the one they are going to deal with, the same second they decide to run away. If my name is George, I have a blue eyes, I'm born in England, and I know nothing about Arabic, Trust me, all of them, they will line up to debate me. As simple as that.
The problem is, he's an Arab, he speaks Arabic, he knew way more than we can imagine we know, and he can surprise us anytime with an answer. So what we can do? The only option to claim victory is to avoid him. How we can avoid him? We call him liar. We make videos supposedly refuting him, but those videos are funny and jokers. Because if you are a man, call me and prove me wrong. Right? Do you think really, if those people, they have the ability to prove me wrong, they will hesitate for a second to call me? Just think about it. How come I open my Skype and I say, okay, who want to call me? Anyone. You can. And even I offer them that I will never hang up on you. I will never, I will treat you nicely, especially those names who claim to be knowledgeable. They will not, still not do it. And not only that, I will call you on your Skype and your show. You know, go, you go live. The same as I did with Mimi Hijab. I'm the one who called him. He did not let me speak. He hung up on me six times in less than six seconds. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Dr. Yasser Kadri and other scholars must step down, resign. First, my friend, Yasser Kadri is not a scholar. Those, none of them is a scholar. They are jokers. They are pretenders. You see, a scholar, look like these days a scholar is anyone who is holding an iPad in his hand. No. None of those people is a scholar. They are just in the business of Islam. And having a PhD, you know, once I decide to... Uh, Somebody told me, why you don't do PhD? I said, uh, why? He said, you know, at least, uh, I mean, it's like a title, the PhD in Islam. Hmm. So I said, no, not a bad idea. So they gave me a name of a university. It's a friend, you know, I'm, I'm a person actually from the, from the, from YouTube. They, uh, they gave me a name of a Christian university and uh, they transferred me to the, the one is in charge of this department. And then I spoke to him. He said, to be honest with you, I do not know much. This is the guy who will be supervising me. This is the one who will give me the, the degree. He says, to be honest, I do not know much about Islam. I always listen to someone in YouTube. And by the way, he have like your voice. <laughs> he does not know that I'm a Christian prince. So the guy want to give me the PhD. He watched my videos to learn from me. As he said, uh, by the way, he have like your accent and even your voice, like very close, actually, you know, we are speaking over the phone. I said, oh, OK, so you listen to him and you learn about Islam from him. He said, yeah. And uh, is, is that you? I, I said, OK, you know, if, you know what? I will think about it. I did not answer him. I will think about it and I will call you later. We will see. All right. So, I mean. The guy want to give me PhD is the one who listened to my videos to learn from me. It's a paper. All of those, they got their PhD from Toronto, from Canada, from USA, by people who do not know much about Islam anyway. Anyway, <clears throat> PhD have nothing to do with knowledge. Knowledge is something you can earn. It's not a degree. Actually, I noticed that people who have degrees, they are very short of knowledge. Because usually a degree is focusing on something very specific. And degree is about you memorizing, uh, especially when it's come to something that have nothing to do with philosophy. You know, like philosophy is something you have to think. You have to be a deep thinker, uh, like logical, etc. But uh, when it's come to religion or history, it's about memorizing things and go to the exam, write down what is written in the textbook and you pass. That's it. That doesn't mean you have knowledge. Uh, no, I did not do Takiya. I did not lie to him. I did not say it's not me. Actually, I don't remember the whole conversation, what happened. But I mean, this is what, like, a summary of it. Um, you know, I told, okay, I might call you later. We will see. But there's no point. It's cost a lot of money. I have to spend one year in the campus, in the university. And then the rest of the years, I can stay, do it from home. So all this money for what? To get a piece of paper and it will, will add nothing to me except doctor 
but I don't want it. No. Uh, they need a pencil certificate certificate. I don't know what is that. Are you a PhD in Sharia? No, I don't have a PhD. I got my degree in Islamic law, civil law. I have a master degree, uh, but my master have nothing to do with the stupidity of Islam. And I am not seeking a PhD degree because that will not add anything to me. His channel got banned. Yeah, well, you have to deal with it. It's okay, he can open a new one and people will come. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, never, never think that's that's a degree is what give you degree is just to give you a job maybe you know degrees they give you a job it's like okay you want to apply for a job what is your education but this is education about the job not education about education so like social life uh, history religion is a very complicated knowledge because everything is connected history language uh, like you know if you want to study the Bible right now we do some time we speak about the Bible right but the Bible is very can be very complicated a study if you want to go and let us say you want to be a scholar there's a lot of amazing things about the Bible the coding there's a code in the Bible there is a, a language there's keys there's amazing stuff but for us you know let us say we want to be, we are just believers, let us say, and we are not a specialist. So we concentrate in understanding the simple teaching of God about how to be with him. What is salvation? How we can be saved? But the Bible is way more complicated than this. You see, obviously the Bible, when it's, when it's given to us, it was not meant to be just a book. It meant to be a message. Even names in the Bible, they are not names. Like if you go right now, I'm not going to tell you the answer. Search right now, you will be surprised. What the mean of Moses? You will be surprised. It's about what happened to Moses. What the meaning of the name Abraham? You will be surprised. The name of Abraham is about what happened to Abraham. How that can be? You know what I mean? I mean, how I can be named and my name fit perfectly with my story. You know what I mean? So there's a high authority involved in giving this book. So when we say Abraham and the Muslim, they stole the name Abraham, but they don't know what Abraham means. Sometimes they call him Ibrahim, you know, the Quran, sometimes have many reading. For Ibrahim and ever, 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 you know, like Abraham or Ibrahim. It's the one who crossed to the other side, you know, Abraham, the one who crossed the river, the other side. So, how the name was given to Abraham and why the name fit with his story? Obviously, high authority, God, is involved in this. Same when we see. Uh, when a Muslim he says to us the name of the Messiah, his name is Al Masih in Arabic. Okay, what Al Masih mean? You will not believe it. The answer is Muslims they give you. Every one of them he guess, he start guessing because they don't know what this means. What Al Masih mean? To the point, one of the opinion they say that the Messiah, his name is Al Masih because he have a flat feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's amazing, stupid garbage. The flat feet. Uh, the Quran says, as an example, the word Israel. You ask the Muslims, what Israel mean? They don't know. Okay, what Adam mean? They don't know. What Eve mean? They don't know. But if you search, you will be amazed. All those are not names. None of those are names, actually. 
None of those are names. Even when we say God, what God he says to Musa? What he, what he said? Is that a name? No, it's not a name. He told him, what, okay, what's your name? What I will tell my people? He did not give really a name. So when we go in the Quran and we read the Quran, we will find a lot of stupidity. The Muslims, they try to make stupidity look smart. So they say they have a science. If you go right now and search in Google, Prophet Google, peace upon him, you will find tons of videos made by Muhammad and about science and the Quran, but not even one of them is true. And you know what? Even though I'm not planning to stay for long, if there's any Muslim want to call me, and show me something scientific in the Quran discovered to be true. It's not a fraud. If there's any Muslim in the chat willing to call me, just to show you how powerful the fraud, how, how easy to expose it. Any Muslim, I did not open my Skype yet. <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan? Look at this. I just opened search a page in a search in Google. I found this. Seven mind blowing scientific facts mentioned in the Quran. It's mind blowing. My, my, my head is blowing, my friend. You should see what happened to my, my, my head. <clears throat> someone he wants to debate me. His name is Someone. That's a good name. Okay, let's log in Skype. Even though I'm not planning really to stay long, I have many things to do. But we give it a chance. What's his name? The guy who wanted to debate me. I don't see anyone texting me. Text me there, my friend. <clears throat> so, seven mind blowing. In the Quran. Okay. What are those seven mind blowing? Aren't you really curious now to see what they are? Let us see. The origin of the universe, brother. Really? The Quran speak about the origin of the universe? How is that? Let us see. <laughs> All right. Uh we are familiar with the biblical account of a creation. God created the world in six days and rested in the seven. He assigned Adam, the first man, to rule over his earthly creation. While most of the account, if this is accepted with, within Islam, the Quran uh, one step farther and detailed the creation of the universe itself. Let us see. Then he turned to the heaven when it was a smoke and said into it and to the earth, come both you willingly or not willingly. Here you notice yourself, why they cut that? I mean, why you don't show us that uh, what, what happened? Why, why you quote the verse right away? What about read the before it and after it? Because we need to understand what happened. The reason they will not do that, because that will show you that Allah is a stupid. Let us go. It actually, the verse alone by itself here is this disaster. According to this verse, the earth was created before the heaven. The heaven was still a smoke. Even the verse here says that translation. Do you see it? So the stupid who is making a, a mind-blowing discovery, he is so stupid to the point he did not notice that the Quran is saying that the earth is created first. There's no space. The heaven was a smoke. 
Now, if we go to chapter 41, verse number 11, let us laugh together. Just to show you how easy, I mean, it's a joke. You know, we are just having fun. This is a chapter 41. And don't forget to mention that chapter 41 is totally the opposite in order of a creation with the chapter number 79, proving again that Muhammad is a fraud. Read carefully. This is a chapter 41, and this is why they did not quote for us the verses before it. I mean, what you will lose? You quote for us this verse, and you did not quote to us the verse before it. Why? Because it's embarrassing. So, say it is Allah. Actually, let us see the translation here. This is Yusuf Ali. It's a stupid translation, as usual. They use weird language and stupid stuff. Okay. Say Muhammad S A W S A W is like short wave, you know, because Muhammad his wave can go anywhere. It's a microwave. Do you verily disbelieve in him who created the earth in two days? The earth created in two days. Are you sure? Okay. And set up rivers in worship to him. Okay, and then he says, and then he placed therein on earth mountain, the earth was without mountain and then Allah he placed mountains brother in the top of the earth is that what the what, what science say is that what science says mountains are part of the earth they are coming from inside the earth from deep the earth not something you place in the top of it and why he put it there so they will earth will not will not shake because Muhammad he can imagine the earth as a flat a flat carpet and you put some rocks on it so you know okay let's see we have a caller i hope he's a muslim because you know hello good morning uh, uh, christian prince how are you good morning oh. good afternoon well good afternoon from london no problem you are my friend you're welcome what do you want to say to us i'm on the live on the air yes we are live on air are you a muslim my friend <laughs> i'm not a muslim brother i'm a christian i'm an ex-seek you are ex-seek oh okay Yes, you debated my young friend yesterday, uh, Mr. Sanwa. We debate with him regularly anyway. So I just wanted to say thank you. You've done a very good job and wonderful job you're doing anyway for everyone. Oh, this guy, he, he, uh, this guy, he lives in London? From Bangladesh, yes, sir. You debated with him in Bangladesh yesterday. Do he go to Speaker Corner? No, he doesn't go to Speaker Corner. I got uh, friends in uh, Speaker's Corner. Brother Kane, uh, Builder Bob, you know Bob the Builder? Mm hmm. Yeah, good guy. Brother Kane, uh, Sister Hatoum is there as well. Yeah. She's doing a wonderful job. Uh, Daniel and the other guys, they're very good. They're doing a very good job. No, thank, you. thank you, my Sorry. friend. Thank you. Anything else? But you're doing show? a very good job. I will try to get your books as well. And uh, I'm just saying you've done a very good job. Brother, is is it possible to look at some times to look at the Hadith as well? You, but you don't show the Hadith. Am I right? Which Hadith you want? You know, when you're looking at uh, the Hadith, when you're looking sometimes, I can't see the Hadith. Is it not possible looking at Hadith? We can follow the Hadith as well? I mean, always I show the Hadith. I'm not sure what you mean. I always show, show them in the screen. No, because sometimes you go very fast. I can't see the Hadith. That's no problem. I do follow you sometimes, mostly. Uh, no, it, because it's not always possible to... Uh, no, I got like, this number through a friend of mine. Yeah, like, in India. yeah, if you watch my videos, actually, I show the hadith, especially if I am, like now we are just having a conversation, I'm not debating anyone, uh, so I can mention something without right away showing it, but... Uh, I'm going to also get your books and bless someone with your books as well. All right, my So friend. if I can get that, uh, on, I'll go on your website, I don't know which website to go on to get your books. Just go to, to Amazon. Order them on, go, go to, go to, you can go to can Amazon. Can you send me on my, the, this just go, here, or just can go, I? Just go to Amazon, type Christian Prince, you will find my books. In many languages. Okay, I will get them to bless some people as well. Yeah. All right, my friend. Thank you good very books. much for your call. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're doing a very well. Keep up the very good work, please. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I thought he's a Muslim, but he's not. Uh, so, guys, let us go back to the topic. So, Allah, he placed uh, mountains in the top of the earth, but all of us, we knew that this is not true. This is stupid. This is why they will not show it to you. It says here actually in front of you and then he placed this is not my translation this is their translation imagine how stupid the statement is he placed firm mountains above it i mean which donkey he agree with this nobody 
and then he 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 made all the, like grass trees in four days but the total now is two plus four that is six days already and then then which mean what actually in arabic it says thumma there's a guy he's a muslim he teach arabic he explained to you what thumma mean he said clearly thumma mean like way after not right away you know like in arabic we can say and like and after right away and there is thumma which has come like there's a period so thumma and then he went to the sky and the sky was a smoke so the earth according to the quran was totally finished and there's no sky there's nothing and then he completed them and he finished their creation in two days and then he made them seven heavens and then he made the stars so look at those liars they say to you this is a mind blowing in the quran chapter 41 verse 11 but they will not show you verse number 10 they will not show you verse number 12 because you will die laughing at the stupidity the quran confirmed you remember when did that he says to a christian uh, a priest <laughs> your bible says that the sun was created for four days if somebody have the video so we can play it on we can laugh the stupid did that to not know that the Bible says that God said, let be light, and light was. This is from the beginning. So there's light. And then he called the light day, and he called the, the, the dark night. So we have light before the sun is created. Number two. In the Quran, the that was making fun of the Bible, saying, claiming, which is wrong, that the Bible says the sun was created in Wednesday. But the Quran says, that after all the creation finished then Allah start working at the end the last step is creating the stars as you see in front of your eyes and then we what we decorated with the stars so those bunch of fool they try to make fun of your Bible but the fact they are fool you see obviously that's why I say that those are not scholars like many of you say, think that the that is a scholar the that is an idiot but the, the problem is the, that was debating people who know nothing about Islam usually. Until he debated Anisha Rush. Anisha Rush, he whipped the floor with him. That's why the, that did not come the second debate to debate him. If you go here, you will see the following. So when did that in the stage was saying, <laughs> so the sun was created Wednesday, <laughs> you know, imagine if I was in the stage and I say, you idiot, you just made fun of your prophet. You are a certified donkey. This is Muhammad talking, saying Allah, the exalted, the glorious, created the clay in Saturday, created the mountains on Sunday, created the trees on Monday, created the things in Thailand labor on Tuesday and created the light in Wednesday. Do you see it? The that was making fun of Christians. So what was the problem here? The problem that we Christians, we did not educate ourselves before we debate a religion. I mean, how you want to debate a religion? You don't know anything about it. You know what I mean? That is showing you some arrogant of some Christians who don't want to go and debate without knowing what they are debating. Hello? Yes, my friend, go ahead. Christian, but I will have in two hours a debate with a Muslim. Yeah. And he's a friend of mine. And I bought your books, uh, Deception of Allah, Volume 1. Mm -hmm. And I have read it. And at the page 51, mm -hmm. uh, there is the story about um, Muhammad uh, ordered Abu Bakr, Umar, and Ali to kill the young believer in the mosque. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think the, the number of the hadith is wrong because at the page 51, uh, there is... No, no, it's not, it's, no it's, not, it's not wrong because people are, you know, they are, this is what we are talking about. People do not know what they are talking about and yet they think they are talking about something. You see, when I say, what is the reference they are saying? Uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. Yeah, uh, but this is quoted, but this is quoted from different book quote in Sahih al-Bukhari so that you will see the numbers have nothing to do with Sahih al-Bukhari itself so if you are knowledgeable you will know actually 
uh, I made videos about it, search them in the internet, and you will find all the reference about those. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. first of all, the story is exist. The story is true. And when we quote from, when we say, uh, like, as an example, a sheikh, he is saying, there's, there, there's books written about Sahih al-Bukhari. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, and they are talking about a story mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. Mm -hmm. So, the hadith reported there, you know, maybe, maybe like when we did the translation, we should add more information and, do, and details. However, I did add those information in my videos explaining those hadith. And they are true and they are there. And no Muslim can deny them. Okay. Uh, what, what should I type in? Uh, to, to uh, Kirin on uh, Muhammad Kirin Onnocent. Um, I, I will try to, to search it for you. Just give me a second. Let me see if I can find myself. Okay. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> uh, actually, I made a video for Amir because the Muslims, they were arguing with, uh, with him about this too. So you can see the videos of Amir. Do you know Amir? Mm, yeah. Okay. You know. uh, but somebody just told me uh, Amir Page is banned. I know. Let us see if I can find something. <clears throat> uh, here we go. Uh, you see, I just searched for uh, in YouTube. You can do the same, my friend. Uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, okay. Muhammad ordering. Search for the. So, so you can you can see it in the screen. Muhammad order the killing of innocent uh, of a good Muslim Christian prince. You see, this is not my channel. Those are people who download my videos. All right. Okay. Yeah. So you can go and uh, watch this video and you know see the reference all right okay now i see Thank here different here there's different title but i think it's the same yeah but maybe here this is a long one this one is a short one is easier search for it you will find it you know so just to to not to repeat the same thing over uh you know um, the muslims always they try to argue like the same happened, we have a guy, his name is Fifi. Guys, you remember Fifi? Fifi, Fifi, yes. the, the sister of me. Yes. So he said the, the introduction of Christian Prince book, nowhere can be found in Fathul in in uh, in uh, you know in the in the in the book in Fathul Bari. You know, I was quoting mm -hmm. different book speaking about Fathul Bari. You see, but he's a stupid, he's a dummy. So we went to Fathul yeah. Bari and we showed him the quotation. So when a Muslim scholar, he caught something, a story mentioned, and he mentioned that Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, he have examples of that. This is not my quotation. This is the Muslim quotation. I'm just mm -hmm. presenting to you what Muslims, they believe. You know? So in order to avoid, they say, oh, we cannot find in Sahih al-Bukhari because they are arrogant and stupid. They do not know what they are talking about. This is not even there. It's not Sahih al-Bukhari. I'm quoting. It's a book speaking about Sahih Bukhari. You know, um, like here, if we go, see. Uh, let's see here, if we go in this video, give me a second. I will skip the intro with the music, so we don't waste our time. All right, here we go. This is uh, advice you to go and listen from there. I will play a little bit of it because here I cannot uh, share my uh, my audio with you. Uh, you hang up and you can search. You can uh, watch the video and you will see what this video is saying. All right. All right. All right. Take care, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. You're welcome. Prove that this hadith to be accurate. Please feel free after I show you the reference to call me. On a sky, I show you from Al Alabani or show me where the on, on Imam said that the Prophet killed a Muslim, a good man, as Sahih. Okay, so here we are saying that the Muslims, okay, call us and we will show you. Here we go.
and I accept, I challenge you. First of all, we go to Fathul Bari. You will see in Fathul Bari, it says the following. And this is about the story we mentioned about your prophet killing a man. He was doing nothing except he was praying and worshiping Allah. See, this is the book of Fathul Bari of the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari. The dummies, they think I'm talking about the, the numbers is coming from al-Bukhari when the fact this is Fathul Bari explanation of al-Bukhari. And here you see the numbers, you see the hadith number, and it's a true story. It says, وَذَلِكَ مَا فِيمَا أَخْرَجَهُ أَحْمَدْ بِمُسْنَدٍ بِمُسْنَدٍ جَيِّدْ عَنْ أَبِي سَعِيدٍ It says here, this is what came from the book of Ahmad with uh, authentic or uh, uh, good musnad, uh, uh, which means like uh, a proof of it. This is have a good sanad. It have a good sanad, huh? which means good uh, backbone. All right. The story here have a good sanad. sanad. And then uh, we see the rest of the story in the front of us. However, I'm not going to stop here because you mentioned to me as an example, Al Alabani. And as long as Alabani is your favorite scholar to prove that this is a true story, I'm going to go to Al Alabani. Here in front of us, here it says, you see, Kitabul Istibaba, etc. So th the problem is that those stories are in Arabic. That's why I said my books is extremely important to provide you how disgusting Islam is because those books are not in English and you will never find actually any English translation will be truthful. As, as an example, Sahih al-Bukhari in Arabic is different from Sahih al-Bukhari in English. Ibn Kathir in English is different from Ibn Kathir in Arabic. Totally different. Let's continue. Bingo. This is al Albani. Let me try to make it. I don't know how we can make the thing, all of it appear because they made it from edge to edge. You see, even when I extend the page, still it's from edge to edge. It's like uh, hard to make it come. Mm, let us see. Okay. Anyway, so what what the story here this is alabani the muslims would say to us alabani say this is not true alabani says this is daif here it says this is sahih your sheikh alabani which is a potato and this guy by the way he, he did you know like he did not uh, die a long time ago i mean this is not uh, but muslim he's a big shot for the muslims no problem he says this is Sahih. It's in front of your eyes. So the Muslim they could not handle the truth that this is true. This is what it is. Muhammad is a is a fraud. He is a killer. He got jealous from a man. What the man did nothing. He is praying too much. How you kill a man for praying too much? Claiming that this guy is the devil. Is evil. But the man, he did nothing. He is just worshipping Allah. He said shahada. He believed in Muhammad. He prayed too much. And what happened? Muhammad came to his companion and he found him speaking about this man. How amazing he is. Obviously, Muhammad is evil. He found that this person causing a threat. People they like him. Uh oh, tomorrow he might claim to be a prophet like me. So what I will do? Let him. Let me kill him. Let me kill him.
So when the Muslim, they say those hadith are not accepted. And here the funny, the Muslim, he says to me, he made a challenge. If you show me that this is Sahih, I will leave, I will leave Islam. But they don't do that. Somebody told them you cannot find this. This is not Sahih. Even some of them, they say it's not true. It's not exist. <laughs> it's not there. And then how embarrassing. How embarrassing. But, you know, for me, when Muslims, they try to deny something, it's for my benefit. For that, will come back on them and will make it more horrible. It's the same as when Mimi Hijab, he tried to hide uh, more than 30 minutes of his interview with Yasser Kadri. If he did not do that, nobody will notice what happened because we don't watch their videos, really. I mean, the two idiots speaking to each other, who cares? But when they start hiding it, people just start getting curious to see what happened, why they are hiding it, what's wrong there. What this is, the Muslim, they start talking about it. How come the, the interview in the page of Mimi Hijab is something and the interview in Yasser Qadri, why Yasser, why this part of the interview is gone? So people start looking for it, searching for it, reading it, watching it. So when a Muslim, they try to deny it, they get themselves in trouble. Not us. And here we go. You said if it's Sahih, you see, in the beginning of the video, the guy, he posted saying, if this is Sahih, I will leave Islam, brother. I tell you, brother. It says here in front of you, as silsila sahih al-Alabani. Al-Kitab, even the name of the book, the Sahih of Hadith. as silsila sahih Who is the author? Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani. What volume? Volume number seven. Page number, I think this is 657. Right? So they say it's not true. Christian Prince, he bring you information, his book does not exist. Do you think really a person, he will make a book and this book will be printed and there is nowhere to find those. This is why I said my book, yes, my book is a trouble making book because Muslims, they never heard these stories before. Those are not for a normal average person to know. So when the Muslim, they hear the story, they say, what? No way, the Prophet did that. That's impossible. But it's there. It's in the front of you. And here we go. A challenge right now. Who speak Arabic is willing to call me or read the page in the front of us. And you translate it. What do you think, guys? Who is a Muslim who speak Arabic? He is willing to call us. And you read it and you translate it. Anyone? Anyone is proud about his prophet ordering the killing of innocent Muslim who did nothing? Just because he is jealous from him? And even guys, the story is saying that one after one from the companion of the faith in Muhammad, they go inside the mosque to kill the guy. The guy don't stop praying. Ali, he went to kill him. He found him praying. Omar want to kill him. He found him praying. Abu Bakr want to kill him. He found him praying. The guy is praying. And this is why Muhammad want to kill him because this guy is too much. So Muhammad, because he's, he was afraid that this person one day he would become something, he decided to get rid of him. Otherwise, I challenge any Muslim to tell me what is the reason. What this guy did? Nothing. Claiming that he will be uh, something bad. The funny, the Muslim, just yesterday they said to us, the Quran forbid us from killing someone innocent, which is absolutely a lie. For innocent in Islam is a person who is not a Muslim. But here we see Muhammad, even the Muslim, you want to kill him. Why? Because he's jealous.
that's all anyway thank you for your uh, question and here again this is the the name of the video you can watch it and uh, you know let the muslim read it for you and actually there's more name way, of the title more more reference to wish that you killed this man okay even here i use google translation as usual because this book is in, in here it's in arabic so what i did i copied the text in the front of your eyes eh, like here and i post it there this is the story as it is copy google prophet google now google you know don't give perfect translation but you know it's good Anyway, this is the name of the title. Sahih. The title is Sahih. Even the top, it says Sahih, right. You see the translation of the, uh, of the Google. It says Sahih, which means right. Correct. Authentic. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, I really love when Muslims, they make a challenge. And the funny, all of them, they don't dare to call me and make this challenge. You see, did you ask yourself why the Muslims... I mean, okay, they find something supposedly it's not right, Christian Prince, he said in this book. Why do you don't call me and get me busted? You know what I mean? I mean, this should be a golden opportunity for you to do. Why you are hesitating? Why you are waiting? Here we go. My Skype is open. Anyone can call me. Do, do, you, do you understand how, how bad their situation? Your situation is very bad, my friend. So this guy, he don't brother, he don't know what he's talking about, the brother. The story is not true. Call him, get him busted, right now. They don't dare because they knew. I'm not lying. It's in front of you. They say it's weak. It says, says Sahih. In the front of us, it says Sahih. So what do you mean weak? Look, even here in front, it says, وَهَذَا إِسْنَادٌ صَحِيحٌ عَلَى شَرْطِ مُسْلِمٌ And this is a, a, an authentic Sahih in the condition of Muslim, which means according to Muslims. وَقَالَ الْحَيْثَمِي Chapter 6, verse number 225. وَرَوَاهُ أَحْمَدْ وَالطَّبَرَانِي It's mentioned by Imam Ahmad and Tabarani. وَرِجَالُ أَحْمَدْ رِجَالُ الصَّحِيحِ And the men of Ahmad, they are Sahih, authentic. <laughs> Anyway, uh, look like we have no Muslims to call, so I'm going to log on of uh, Skype. You know, and thank you for the callers. There's only one reason stopping Muslims from calling me. Those who claim to have knowledge that they knew they don't, and they cannot make it. Uh, first of all, you are not approving anything. You see, here we go. Just to show you the stupidity of those who uh, uh, who have a specialty in Islam, yet he don't have high school. Suddenly, he is a scholar. Hmm. This is Abbas saying, first, you prove nothing. What do you mean, prove nothing? The guy, he is praying to Allah. Why you kill him? You see how they skip the, the, the stupidity? You just said, you prove nothing. I just showed you your prophet killing an innocent Muslim, not the enemy. And then you say, you are uh, you are saying that God in the Bible never authorized the king of innocent. You, you see the stupidity here is amazing in the Quran and in Muslims when they speak about the Bible. As an example, chapter five, verse number 21, it's Allah who ordered Moses and his army to go and slaughter the Jews, to slaughter the, the Palestinians. So why they are being ordered to be slaughtered? According to Islam, they are not innocent for they don't worship God. And here you see the double standard. The Jews, they have war with their neighbors. Their neighbors, they enslave them, they kill them, they rape them, they steal their money, they steal their property, they, they invade their synagogue, they, they, they destroy their synagogue. And then when the Jews, they attack and they kill their children. They kill their children. And they enslaved their children. Actually, the only nation we knew in history, the whole nation taken into slavery is the Jews. 
once by the Egyptian and once by the Assyrian. So when the Jews, they do the same to their enemies, for Abbas, this is current of innocent people. But in the Quran, Allah is ordering Musa to attack people who never attack the Jews. Never have a problem with the Jews. Allah, he assigned the land to the Jews. And he said to them, O my people, enter the holy land which Allah assigned into you. They said to him, there is people who they are mighty people. Those are the Palestinians supposedly according to Muslims. Allah told them, go and assault them. But who is inside those walls, inside those towns? Children, women, old men, young men, all kinds of people. Your prophet, he says, when they say to him, we are killing the, 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 the pagans, and the Christians and the Jews, uh, what about their children? He said, Wahum mean home, and they are from them, so kill them. Even the Quran in the story of Al Khadr authorized the king of an innocent Muslim child who commit no sin. And you say to me, I prove nothing? Eh, you are Abbas. Keep busy with your pizza. If this is not nothing, so what is what is something then? Hmm? This is Allah, and not only that, when the, when the Jews refused to slaughter the Palestinians, Allah, he made the Jews lost their way for 40 years, 40 years in the desert. Why? Because they did not slaughter the Palestinians. Read it carefully. Allah said, therefore, the land will be out of their reach for 40 years. Why? Read the verses before it. For they refused to go and assault the Palestinian. Only two Jews, they want to do jihad with Musa. Let me tell you the name of the two Jews. The first one, his name is uh, Jack Shalom Az Zarqawi. And the second one, his name is Jack Shalom Osama bin Laden. Those are the two only companions of Moshe who want to do jihad according to the Quran. From all the Jews, only two they want to do jihad. Only two. I mean, don't you think this is too much a stupid story? <laughs> only two want to do jihad, guys. Only two. But among there, Allah fearing men, we are two. Only two. A guy who have a nation, he is a leader of a nation, an army. Only two. What happened to the rest? They were wearing jeans, delivering pizza, making holes in it, going to the speaker corner, like Mimi Hijab, with the holes in his jeans, fashion. So as you see, stupidity is amazing. They think they speak smart, but the second they speak, they make poopoo. And we take their purple, and by the way, it's very useful. We use it as a fertilizer for the Quran. And that's why they don't dare really to prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, here we go. Right? And the funny here, by the way, the Muslims, they say, the Jews, they took the land of the Palestinian. That's not fair. Well, the, Allah has ordered them to take it. Go and read it. Is that your Quran? Once I was doing a seminar, you know, and a guy, he stood up, he's a Muslim. He said, so what do you think about uh, the Jews taking the land uh, of the Palestinian? Is that fair? I said, sound like you are a Muslim, are you? He said, yeah, I'm a Muslim. I'm proud to be Muslim. He's very upset because people, they were dying laughing at what I was saying about Muhammad. I said, okay, as long as you are a Muslim, can you open your Quran, chapter 5, verse number 21? He said, what, what? What verse in the Bible? I said, what Bible? I said, Quran, Quran, chapter 5, verse number 21. He said, okay, hold on, hold on. So he grabbed his phone and he started looking and he said, okay, well, what about it? He said, I should read it. He started reading. He said, okay, so? so it says there that Allah, he ordered Moses says to attack the Palestinian and this is the land of the Jews. He Allah assigned it to them. He said, this is not the Jews. Those are not Jews. 
He said, it says Musa. Do you see it says Musa? This is not, he said, this is not about Musa's. This is not about Musa's. Where it says Musa's? He said, read, read. He said, it says, nowhere it says Musa's. I said, read the verse after it. Read the verse before it. Potato. Remember, Musa said to his people, O oh my people, call in remembrance and the favor of Allah into you when he produced prophets among you and made you kings. When Musa said, the second he saw that, he said like a chicken. And everybody started laughing. So the Quran confirmed that the land of the Jews is the land of the Jews. And by the way, until the seventh century, not a single Arab, he belonged to this land. The Muslims, they came and not a single person in that land speak Arabic. Not in Israel, not in Syria, not in Iraq, not in Egypt, not in Morocco, not in Algeria, not in Libya nowhere the invasion of the Arab they took over Islam is about making you an Arab potato which means you are their potato still you still they will not consider you as an Arab by the way as an example if you go to Saudi Arabia and you are an Egyptian with my respect to, respect to all Egyptians they make fun of you just because you are Egyptian you are not an Arab even those Muslims the funny they call themselves Arab you see, I mean, how do you lose your dignity when you became a Muslim? How you deny your heritage? And because Muhammad, he said, the one who is proud about his inheritance, tell him go and bite the penis of your father. Imagine how filthy this comeback this person is. Bite the penis of your father. This is how prophets they speak. And then the Muslim, they will quote me and they will edit my video and say, did you say that? Bite the penis of your father? Hmm. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Let us see. So you Christian, you hide behind Islam. My friend, it's you, it's you who hide behind the Christianity. You Muslims, as an example, Muslim proper, just to show you how you are, how, how you are a stupid fraud. You live in England and you pay tax to the Queen of England. And the coin you hold have the picture of the Queen of England. According to Islam, you are not a Muslim. Your prophet, he says, Man ashara qawmin, minhum, yaman minhum. The one who lived with them for 40 days, he is one of them. Your prophet said in the Quran, in the same chapter we are reading, chapter 5, that the one who take them as a friend or a protector, he is one of them. Who is the police who is protecting you there? Who is the queen? Is she a Muslim queen? Or she is not? She's a Christian. Even her crown have a cross in the top of it. Read the Quran. You are a coward who decide to live in England even though the Quran forbid you from obeying and to be subdued, potato, to a Christian king those let us see let us see what the quran is saying oh who you believe take not the jews and the christians for your friends and protectors who is the head of the army the queen of england who is the the queen of england she is a christian who is the protectors are the christians they are but friends and protectors for each other and he among you that turn to them for friendship is of them so who is the hypocrite on you you are just a potato who decided to work selling pizza delivering pizza in london for that more honorable for you from being someone living in pakistan which means living in the christian land selling pizza or delivering pizza is way more honorable give you more respect as a human being from living between the muslims and ask yourself why how come you cannot find respect in your country where its majority are Muslims and the king is Muslim or president? How come you find that you are respected in a Christian land? 
for Islam is filthy cult. Do you see it? All those Muslims who live in England, in America, and they claim that they are Muslims according to the Quran, they are not. The verse in the front of you, does it say, guys, that the one he among you who take them in a friends or protection is one of them? It says that. That's it. You are one of them. Hypocrite. They don't want to see this verse. Don't show us the verse. This is embarrassing. Erdogan, he joined the NATO. Well, according to the Quran, Erdogan is not a Muslim no more. And the one before him was the Muslim. And the one before him, whoever, from the beginning, they are in the NATO. How you can join the NATO? It says, it says the one who joined them is one of them. Do you see it? Qatar, they have the biggest base ever for USA army in the Middle East. Who is the protectors of Qatar? USA. But the Quran, the Prince of Qatar is a Muslim Brotherhood. This is number one supporter for the Muslim Brotherhood in the world, him and Erdogan. But both of them, they have American base all over their countries, American base and other Christian countries base. But the Quran forbid them from doing that. Why? For this is hypocrisy and this is taqiyya. So they, they legalize it saying, oh, we have to do taqiyya. We are weak. We need them. Turkey without America is nothing. It's dead. Actually, the only source of income Turkey is, is, is enjoying is uh, the NATO and the refugee right now. There's no tourism no more because of Corona. The thing is dead. Trump, he, if he make a tweet about Turkey, the currency of tr t Turkey, it dropped horribly just by a tweet. This is telling you how weak this country is. I mean, how in the world a foreign president, he make a tweet about your country and your economy is gone by a tweet. If a tweet do this to your economy, what about a fart? What if Donald Trump, he fought at, at Turkey? And yet they are subdued to the NATO, subdued to the will of etc., the will of Donald Trump, the will of etc. And they live in England and they, they speak, we are Muslims. Alhamdulillah, brother, we are Muslim, brother. Alhamdulillah, you are not a Muslim, you are false. When the last time you practiced Sharia Allah? Never. When? Never. Never, never. Even the Middle East, they don't practice Sharia Allah. Where? Even in Saudi Arabia, they don't practice it. I go to Saudi Arabia, I don't pay jizya. Do you dare to force me to pay jizya? Let us see. Try it. All right. And you know, the second we start talking about the filthy Muhammad, they start talking about European occupying countries. What does this have to do with Jesus? Secondly, it's you Muslims who invite them to occupy countries, like what happened in Iraq. More than 80 mullahs came and kissed the shoes of George Bush. Please come, save us from Saddam Hussein. And the stupid George Bush, he went there, believing them. They get rid of Saddam Hussein, and now the Shia took over, and now they don't want them. They use you. The same as now, you know, all of them, they are the same. Who is the one who invade the, the American to this north of Syria? The Kurdish. Well, the Kurdish are Muslims. Who is the one who's asking, begging USA to go to Saudi Arabia, the king of Saudi Arabia? Is he a Jew? And the Muslim, they say he's a Jew, actually. What about Imarat? <laughs> what is the Muslims? You see, Islam is not exist no more. Go and see what's happening, my friend. Islam is a balloon. All what you need, a needle. You can get it for free from a Christian prince. You give it in the bum of Muhammad and the balloon, but be careful. It's full of fart. We, we, we turn off our Skype already. Uh... Uh, guys, look at this guy. He is talking about filthy pagan ideology. 
I mean, those people, they kiss stones, they go around the stones, they look at stone, and the, and the hadith says that the stone is the right hand of Allah, and yet they call us pagan. You believe it? Do you believe it? They are the one who kiss a stone. They are the one who believe that touching a stone erase your sin. Imagine how pagan, you are pagan to the bones. You are pagan to the bones. What kind of religion teaching you that touching stones erase your sin unless it is pagan? And yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let us go and see some of the pagan practice as long as Abbas talking about pagan. Give me a second, please. <laughs> I love it when a Muslim speak about pagan. Let us see. The Muslim they practice tawaf around the Kaaba. Why? Because there's a black stone there. Read carefully. We used to worship stones, and when we found a better stone, then the, then the first one, we would throw the first one and take the better one, the later one. But if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth soil and bring it, bring a sheep milk and mix it with it. And then what we do? We perform tawaf around it. This is exactly what you do. Tawaf is a pagan practice. Stone is a pagan practice kissing stones is a pagan practice exist before islam exist by islam exist with muhammad and muhammad he make it as part of islam do you see it and yet this idiot he call us pagan who is the pagan why jesus says worship stones kisses stones did jesus kisses stones and says this is stone erase your sin if you kiss it like muhammad Those Muhammadan, they, especially like Abbas, he's like a prostitute work in Playboy station and she claimed to be the virgin of Pakistan. Her boobs is coming out, her nipples in her nose, yet she is wearing burqa. I'm just describing for you how I see their hypocrisy. Even the wife of the Prophet, she was accused to be a whore by the Muslims. The Muslims accuse Muhammad's wife to be a whore. The Muslims accuse Muhammad to steal underwear. Who? The Muslims. And I change anyone to say it's not true. And then what happened? Muhammad, he come with Allah saying, oh, if you uh, if accuse somebody with adultery, uh, uh, you have to bring four witnesses. What? What, what? Four witnesses. So Abbas, he go to his house. I don't want to insult his Abbas. Forget about Abbas. You might think I'm trying to insult him. Uh, uh, Muhammad, he go to his room. He found his wife with a guy. He cannot go to the court and say, my wife, she is cheating. He need to bring four guys. And those four guys, they have to see the private part. Going in, excuse my language. The private part of the women. The four of them. How that can be? How that can be? Have you ever heard of, of a stupid thing like this? We have to find four witnesses and all of them, they have to see the private part. So if they, if they are doing it and she is wearing her skirt, they will not see anything. 
the Arab man he is wearing his dress, long dress, is going to be covered too. They will see nothing. So if you see, there's a story actually about a guy, he came and they found him having sex with the Muslim women. And even the witness, they, they describe that he saw her legs around her neck, making his head like a head of a donkey, like her, her, her feet. I mean, the description is funny. Still is not accepted. Did you see it going in? No. And then Muhammad, he ordered to beat them. This is the most stupid religion. Just to give you an example. <clears throat> but let me first see if I can find this hadith here. Here we go. Guys, look look at this madness. A Jew is brought to a woman, blah, 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 okay, fornication. And then, okay. They are telling him, okay, we found that this woman, she is doing, etc. Uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then they say to Muhammad that we found her pri the private part of the man going inside the private part of the woman. Read carefully. The Jews brought a man and a woman of them who had committed fornication. He said, bring me two learned men of yours. So they brought the two sons of Soraya. He adjured them and said, how do you think about the matter of those two persons bear witnesses? To the effect that they have seen his sexual organ in her male or uh, in, in her female organ between two brackets penetrated like the pen go inside the inkwell when enclosed in its case look at the description look at the description they will be stoned to death he asked what uh, he, he asked what is there which prevent you from stoning them they replied our rule has gone, so we disapprove the, of killing or their rule. I mean, look at the stupidity. Isn't it the same hadith says that in different places, Muhammad, he swear by the Torah, and the story was about a person who put his finger over where the story, the, 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 the uh, fornicator to be stoned to death. You see, the, you see how they lie? Then the messenger of Allah said, then called four witnesses. Muhammad asked for four witnesses. And those four witnesses, they have to see the same. They have to see the pen going inside the inkwell, which is in this case the penis. And here we need to ask ourselves a question. If a woman, she get raped, how she can prove that she is raped? She need to bring four witnesses? <laughs> uh, not only it's impossible to bring four guys and they have to see your wife her, excuse my language guys forgive me please her legs is wide forget I'm not going to say anymore you know what I'm talking about <laughs> how you can prove such adultery and Muhammad he made this rule because of his wife Aisha they accuse Aisha that she was sleeping with Safwan. How many witnesses you have? Three? Okay, I will make them four. So he said four witnesses. Three is not enough. Two is not enough no more. Imagine in the case of murder, you need two witnesses only. In the case of fornication, you need four. And what for? They have to see the private part of the man going inside the private part of the woman, which is impossible. I mean, why the guy will wait for you? The second he hears somebody come from coming in the door, he stop, or he keep it in. Excuse my language. You saw nothing. <laughs> you have to see it going in and out. Now, how many of you have the hadith? Did, did the admin post the hadith for you? Who won the hadith? And this is sahih. They can't say it's weak. Stupidity is amazing, as I say. That's why I say. 
If a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? Again, guys, for those who just join us, if you are an Indonesian, don't forget. I see I, I was going to make this video five minutes, you guys. What you did to me? Just to announce that we have a book for free. You guys are something. So now the one who will download the video, please cut the video and make short part about the book only so people can download. All right. So those who just join us right now, we have our book for free in the Indonesian language. Now, sometimes I say Basha language, sometimes I say, is it Bahasa or ba Basha? I'm not sure, Bahasa? I'm not sure how they say the word, Bahasa? Is it Bahasa? I'm gonna change it, make it Basha, man. <laughs> anyway, so if you are an Indonesian person, and my gift to you, we have already two books as a gift to you from a Christian prince for free. You can click at the link down in the info, of this video and you can download immediately the book this is not for sale it's for free it's a gift from me so nobody is allowed to say it if somebody said it, I will sue him I will take him to court don't ever do that it's for free so uh, please if you are Indonesian tell your family it's a very important book now you have to if you really study those books carefully Islam is not only is gone, Islam is destroyed. And I hope that those two books will make a revolution inside Indonesia, an Indonesian which I love very much. I really appreciate them. Wonderful people. They will be saved. They told you something about Islam. The truth is in those books. And it's all free. What do you want more? How far we can go? How far we can go? How far we can give and by the way this is how we support we support ourselves you know by those books so when we give them for free simply we are giving out our support but don't worry the Lord is our provider there's many good people always they support us and they give donation so God is good and maybe we lose in a place but we will never lose there because we will win souls So I'm not going to keep it longer. I want to say thank you all guys for being here. And again, I want to say thank you for the one who translated this book and other books. All the translators who translated my books, they did it voluntarily. Wonderful people. Wonderful people. Not even a penny to their pocket. The funny actually, there's one translator, what happened uh, there's a guy, he's an atheist. <laughs> he said to me, so how come your Lord Jesus is not providing you with a translator for that language? You know, I was saying, I, I, I wish to get the translator for, you know. So he was making fun. I went, I opened my email, and I, I, I mean, the message I have, in the form I have, I found somebody offering me to translate the book. And actually, it was even from like, uh, I don't know, a few hours ago or a day before. I forgot. But isn't it amazing? The guy, he was making fun of me for saying, okay, how, do, how come your God is not listening to you? You want to translate the book. No? God is good. And the Lord, he sent us the good ones and they do volunteer jobs, which is really beautiful. So I'm very thankful for them. Uh, anyway, I think we have enough for today. Uh, and those who will download the video, please cut it. Make short video about the book in the in the beginning introduction, and that's it. You can load it and put the link underneath so people can download the videos. All of you do that. Share in your form. Let everybody know. Let Indonesian read it for free especially Indonesian uh, Muslim pages, you know, because, you know, those Indonesian people, they are very nice people. And they don't know better. I mean, they grow in the family. They are Muslims. Since they are kids, they say to them, they're, Muhammad is an amazing man. Allah is a wonderful God. Eh, that's it. But the truth is, Muhammad is the most ugly, disgusting human being ever exists. 
in Arabian Peninsula. And me myself, I'm ashamed of him that he's an Arab like me. I'm not proud of him. They gave us a very bad image. Islam gave us Arab a very bad image to the point now, the second I say Arab people don't want to be around me. This is what the faith in Muhammad does. I go in the airport. Long line of security. Why? Because of us. This is the truth. Before people, they used to jump in the airplane as taking a taxi. As simple as that. You used to go to the airplane. Nobody even asked you to open your bag. Because of Muhammad now, we spend billions of dollars for airport security, for police security. Just three days ago, two days ago, a guy from Libya, he shout, Allahu Akbar, start stabbing people in, in, in London. This is Islam. And the funny, the Muslim, they make themselves heroes defending the black African. The fact there's some African, they get stabbed between those people too. They don't care you're African or not. They stab whoever in the way. And then the second you say to them, how this happened? They say, this is not Islam. Well, Muhammad did the same. Those Christians, they were lying, laying down between them. There was atheists, there was a Christian, a God knows who was there. Laying down in the park, in the sun. The devil came, started stabbing them. This is Muhammad. The Christian, they were, and the Jews were laying down in Jerusalem. This is their park. This is their secure refugee, refuge camp. The devil Muhammad come to them in their home, invade their home, took their home. And then they claim, they claim to be victims. This is one of the things about Islam. Muhammad, he kill you. He is the kind who will kill you and he will go in your funeral. And he will say the guy was a good guy, by the way. But you are the one who killed him, aren't you? So I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. For the last time, please download the video before the, the link down. As you know, I don't keep my videos. For those who are asking me why my videos don't stay, I don't keep them. Subscribe to other channels where they download my videos. There's many of them. Depend on your language. If you are from Indonesia, there's many Indonesian channels. Download my videos. Always. Subscribe there and you will be able always to be updated. I don't keep videos on my channel because of many reasons. But number one reason, I like people to download them, share them. So if one day we lose this channel, we lost nothing. Or we have them all over. Like now, the guy, he called me, he says, wait, we can find the answer for this uh, uh, story. So we said, okay, let's go and search in Google. And we find it in one of you downloading the video. This is how we can preserve it. Save them in your G drive, serve them in your computer, save the videos in whatever you want. You can even make accounts which are not open in, in YouTube, which means nobody can see the videos, just to back up your, your videos, you know what I mean? You download the videos, you make an account, you load their 1,000 vi video. Make them all private, nobody can see them except you. And one day, and make another account which is open. People can join, see, watch. So if one day you lose that account or you lose a video there, still you have it in your backup in the other one. All right? So may the Lord bless you all. I apologize. I have to go. I am just trying to fix and doing some repair in my uh, my house. Uh, it's a very old house. and need a lot of work. And uh, we need to do some work. So I want to say Christ is Lord. And no better name than his name not hurt of someone have an equal teaching to Christ no matter how good he claimed to be and there is a huge difference between by the way somebody speak good but he don't do what he say and someone he speak wonderfully and he was wonderful that is the Messiah he never commit a sin he is clean from sin and then they say to you, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. The God of Muhammad is full of sin. 
is a false god, is a shaitan, is the devil. Muhammad himself, the Quran confirmed that he's a big time sinner. We have the Messiah. His name is amazing. His words is so beautiful. You do not need to have a PhD to be touched by his words. The Muslim, they bring you as someone, he have nice voice to recite the Quran, to fool you by the voice, not by the words. His voice, whatever he's saying, is going to look nice. Bring me. If you want to see how the Quran sounds like, go and see Mimi Hijab reciting the Quran. You, you, you will vomit. You will vomit literally. This is why always when they want to recite the Quran to promote Islam, they bring somebody have a very nice voice. So when you hear the Quran, you say, ah, oh, this is nice. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> it is the sound, my friend. Don't make them fool you. What about you read the contact of what he's reading? What he's saying is disgusting. It's a shameful. It's stupid. It's harmful. It's dangerous. It's like somebody making a CD, but and his voice is nice, but everything there is the F word. And there's too many of them these days. Disgusting. People playing those songs in their cars with no shame. Because a human being mind became corrupt. And this is exactly Islam. They think this is nice. They think this is beautiful. And yet nobody understands even what you guy is saying. So thank you. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord, Islam is false. And see you soon. Take care.